Yes, sir, baby, on the radar radio. Yo, special guest in the building. Staten Island is in the building. Wolf Ace Joey is in the building. What's what? up, bro? Welcome to the show. It's good. Well, and we got to make sure that we pronounce it correctly, right? It's yeah. It's Wolf Ace Joey. Yes, Wolf Ace Joey. Not Wolf Face, not Wolf Joey. If you can't pronounce my name, just say Joey. I'm fine with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I think it is, bro? It's like sometimes you have like the mask on, right? Yeah. And, I'm not, and they're not like wolf masks, right? But yeah. like... Maybe like when I see you with the mask on and I look at your name, maybe I'm like, oh, Wolf Face Joey, and he's got the mask. The I don't mask know. Maybe there's like there's like some type of like weird connection. Yeah, uh, no, that that, that explanation there. makes sense, but it's it's Wolf Face. Wolf Face Joey. Yeah. Wolf Ace Joey. Wolf Ace. <laughs> look, see, I just did it by accident again. <laughs> it's fine. You can just call me Joey. You, you know what's mad funny? Cause um, uh, shout out my boy Cam. My boy Cam, he he engineered some of my sessions when uh when Rob is in here, and Cam actually, I want to say like in the fall. I want to say it was like in the fall time. Cam was like, yo, bro, um, you got to check out. He gave me a few artists to check out and you were on that list. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, I had followed you and I was just like waiting. I think I, D I DM somebody about you. And eventually I, I didn't hear back, but I forgot how we ended up linking on the gram. And I and I was like, yo, Cam, I'm like, we finally we got we got Wolf Ace finally. <laughs> and Cam was like, dope. Like, you know, because he had been hyping you up, playing your music around the spot for so long. So um, it's really dope to like actually get to finally have you in here too. Hey, shout out Cam. Shout out to Cam. And you're the fourth uh, Staten Island artist that I have on uh, that I've had in person. In person, yeah. On the show too, which is kind of crazy. I thought I'd have more by now. <laughs> I mean, like, Staten Island is pretty, it's, it's pretty small, especially with the music scene. It's like, there's only a couple people out out there. And, like, the thing about it is sometimes people don't really get out there. Some people some people would, like, do this, the music stuff and then, like, quit, like, halfway in. It kind of sucks, but, you know, the people who carry on going to carry on. What do, you, what do you feel like, I guess, makes makes it like that out there? I feel like people, people on Staten Island, like, Right. It's, I feel like it's everywhere, but mostly on Staten Island, it's like, it's it's really close. So, like, everybody knows everybody on Staten Island. Like, if, That's what I've heard. Yeah, if I don't know you, like, someone I know definitely knows you type okay. stuff. So, like, people, people, and it happened to me when I first started making music. Like, you know what I'm saying? I would think, like, all right, since I, I know, like, a lot of people, it's like, all right, cool. I'm going to drop this song. I'm be like, yo, check out my music. And they'll be like, eh, I don't know. Like, so it's like, I feel like people fear the hate a lot like okay they're like all right if i drop this song and it doesn't do well it just automatically thinks like people don't really fuck with me but like at the end of the day it's like bro you're making music for you that's that's what i've done like i, I was like fuck all that like y'all can hate me i don't give a fuck like i'm gonna make this for me that's what i i'm that's why i started making music to be honest like just for me solely for me and eventually people are going to gravitate towards that right as and, long as you stay consistent yeah as long as you stay consistent you're mm. making the good music you know what i'm saying it's all gonna come so where in Staten Island exactly are you from? Um, well, I was born in the harbor. Okay. Yeah, I was born in the harbor, the uh, Mariners Harbor. Um, I lived with my my mom and my dad for a while, and then you know, I kind of moved out type shit. So yeah. Why are you laughing, Rob? <laughs> oh, that's fire! <laughs> <laughs> wait, that's you so dated someone from Staten Island? Oh, word. <laughs> that's yeah. Nah, wait. shout out to the harbor. Shout out, shout out, Rob on the cameras. I had no idea your girl was from Staten Island. That's, that's crazy. Hard. That's so fire. How you keep the secret from me for a whole year, bro? I thought she was from the Bronx, like you. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Yo, shout out, Rob. What's your girl's name? Shout out Olivia. Shout out shout Olivia shout from out the Olivia. harbor. I had no idea. Yeah, nah. <laughs> so you moved from the harbor to where? So uh, I moved. I was in the harbor. I was born there. Um, and then when I was like eight or nine, I actually moved to Nigeria. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. So I moved to Nigeria when I was like eight or nine. I came back when I was fifteen. Um, yeah. And I've, so you I've spent been six since. years in Nigeria. Yeah, I spent about six years in Nigeria. Did school out there? All that. School. Everything. It's pretty crazy. So how does that? So you said you were nine when you went out there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as culture shock wise, how does a nine year old process? Moving so, halfway across the world, literally. Yeah, so I mean, like, it's kind of it's kind of weird because I, I initially thought it was like a holiday. <laughs> I thought it was a holiday. <laughs> like my mom, according to my mom, shout out to my mom. Like she told me, like, oh, we're going to Nigeria, and I I didn't realize because I was nine. Like I didn't realize like we were going out there for a while. So because I had been there when I was younger, and eventually, like, I stayed there for a couple months, and I'm like, hmm, I don't <laughs> think I'm going home. So, you know, like, event eventually that kind of, like, sunk into my head where I was like, all right, cool. I mean, like, I have family over there, so it's not like I was just out there by myself. Right. But, you know, I was just like, all right, cool. Guess I'm staying with my cousins now, I guess. But that's a very stark contrast in, like, schooling, too. Like yeah. I, the, the schooling is, like, way strict. Like, bro, they teach you algebra in, like, the fourth grade. 
Oh hell no! <laughs> yeah, that shit, bro. That shit's crazy. So you know that, like, I had to adjust to a lot of that. Like, the accent is different. Like, you know, everything is different. Like, you wear uniforms. Like, your shoes have to be clean. Like, you have to wear like a tie and a button-up shirt. What like, you like step in the in the mud by accident, yeah, bro. I mean, like, it, it, <laughs> it is what it is. It's a real thing. I have a question. It's, it's a, no, like, I get it. Like, bro, it's, it's it is what it is at the end of the day. But like, it, it was a, it was a it was a huge. It was a huge like culture shock from like going to like a pub like an American public right. school until like a, a Nigerian like like you have to pay, it's like a private school so you have to right. pay for it like you got to dress up in a certain way like you can't come to school with like regular clothes so it was it was, was kind of I got it took a while for me to get used to it interesting yeah because you know I, I I wonder about things like that too because I when when you have those type of stories right like of people who move away from a certain area at a young age like. Do you also, because you're so young, you're nine years old, right? Do you yeah. also, like, develop, like, an accent when you go over there? Is that, like, obviously you don't have one, but, like, yeah. I think about that. Like, when people, like, when people here um, move to, like, England at such a young age, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, do they develop an I don't know. It's just a thought that just randomly popped in my brain. Yeah, no, you, you definitely develop it. It, it doesn't come, like, immediately. Like, immediately, yeah, but, like, over time and yeah, shit Yeah, but like over that. time, like, I still got the accent, like. Right, you just I just you know yeah what I'm saying? you could yeah <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Can, I can switch like I, like I, it was funny because when I first like moved there like I was known as the like American kid so right. like I still have my accent they would laugh and be like look, like look at this American kid bro <laughs> like the fuck is he doing here but like eventually you know what I'm saying I I got into the you know what I'm saying I made a couple friends got into the move started learning the lingo mm -hmm. and eventually I just became. You're like, like I, kid. you're like, I bet I'm switching <laughs> right now. <laughs> you're like, nah, switch. Dead ass, dead ass. I'll never forget. There was a day I came in, I came into school and like, I had already like learned like a little bit of the slang and I spoke and they were like, <laughs> <laughs> it was American it, nose. It was like, they were like, whoa, yo, say it again. Say it again. <laughs> it was mad funny. It was the funniest day ever, but yeah, it, it was, it was cool. Shout out to Nigeria. So what music do you end up listening to when you're, when you're young then? Uh, um, that's a. That's a big rabbit hole, bro. Right. So, I when I was when I was really really young, before I moved to Nigeria, my mom my mom loved music. Like she absolutely loved music. Like she used to tell me like when she was pregnant of me, she used to have like the little like headphones and like play like oh, the cute. music. And my mom would have the radio on twenty four seven. Like that's what she'd tell me. So, you know, what I'm saying when I was younger, you know, I was always surrounded by music, and I'll never forget the first memory I have of like a music video. Was Andre 3000's Hey Ya. Uh, oh, wow. I was, I think, about five, five, six when I was watching it. I was looking at the TV. I'm like, who is this fly ass nigga <laughs> in a perm? And why do I want to be like this dude? Like, I, I'll never forget. I'm like, who is this motherfucker on the TV? Why is he so fly? Right. And I, I was like, immediately, right from then, I was like, bro, this is it. I love it. I'm I, immediately in love. So you know what I'm saying as I I get a little bit older I start mm. I start like watching like the 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 way I really got into music was like music videos. Mm -hmm. So like um I would watch like uh fucking 106 in Park. Like I used to watch 106 in Park all the time. So I was like watch like Soldier Boy. I would like watch Kanye. I never forget the Good Life video was one of my favorite videos when I was younger. My mom had this this R&B album by Jaheem. It was called Hard. Making of a Man. I know that album from head to toe. That's one of my favorite albums. My mom used to listen to Whitney a lot. Like, we would be in the car driving, and it's either of those two. So, I moved to Nigeria. I started getting introduced to, like, Nigerian music. And this was, like, early, early Wizkid, early David O, early Burner Boy. Like, mm -hmm. so, you know what I'm saying? I, I grew up on that. And then, when I was about 13, thir when I was, like, 12, 11, 12, 13, I started getting back into, like, rap. So, um, Kanye and Jay-Z. Magna Carta. My cousin used to like listen to Eminem a lot, so I would like do that too. Mm. Um, and then kept getting older when I was about fifteen. I listened to Rodeo. It was the the around that time. I have two favorite albums: Rodeo and If You're Reading This Is Too Late by Drake. Okay. I swear to God, those two albums changed my entire life forever. Mm. Cause I remember I listened to Rodeo, and I'm like, that's how I caught the interest. I was like, all right, how do people make beats? That was the first time I'll never forget. And that's how I found out about Wonder Girl. So I'm like, bro, how do, how do people make beats? Like, I want to learn how to make beats. And that didn't happen until later, later in my life. But I listened to those two albums. I'm like, fuck, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. So I moved back. So I moved back to America. 
And there's a whole bunch of stuff, whole bunch of stuff out that I've never listened to. So Antis, Rihanna, um, freaking what else? Cherry Bomb by Tyler was out by the mm. time. And Tyler's my favorite artist. So that's how I kind of like, like delve into Tyler. Cherry Bomb, Frank Ocean with Blonde and like Endless and all that shit. And then when I was 15 turning 16, that's when I found out how to make beats. Mm, okay. So tough. I, f- I learned how to make beats, and then you know, what I'm saying I used to make beats on this on this janky ass website called Audio Tool. By the way, fuck Audio Tool. <laughs> Y'all deleted my account. I had a whole bunch of beats on there, but yeah, I started making like um beats on that website for like I would say like a, like three three years two two three years. Mm-hmm. Then after that, um, they deleted my account. Fuck them, and. I started using FL because my 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 one of my friends had like was like yo bro, use FL bro like you you have to use FL. And I'm like all right fuck I I learned it and then as I was doing that I started finding out about the underground. So there was a rapper his name was Yori he doesn't he doesn't make music anymore unfortunately but mm-hmm. he used to like used to make a lot of music and that's how I started finding out about other artists like Snot I was on the Snot super early I found out about Snot through him. And at the time, I, I was, I found out about Tekka, and this was like late twenty seven, uh, late twenty seventeen. Found out about Tekka and the whole, like this whole underground shit. So, um, make beats for a while, and then summer twenty twenty hits. No, summer twenty nineteen hits, and I'm like, I'm bored. I don't <laughs> like it. I'm bored. I don't. Like I don't. It. I don't like making beats anymore. Fuck this. I want to try something new and, I, and I'm always open to newer stuff because I felt like when I was making beats, I had like done it all. I mean, I didn't have like too many placements, but I had done it all. So around then, around that time, summer 2019, I had met Fago. You know, Sofago? Of course. I met I met Sofago um, like through Instagram and shit. We were in a group together and like some other people and they were all like, yo, try out recording. And I was like, me? Rap? What? No, bruh the fuck like what what am i doing rapping but they were like nah you got to give it a shot like at least like make a couple songs see how you like it so i'm like all right cool whatever so i had a job at the time i clocked out of work that day i think it was like a friday or a saturday clocked out of work went to the best buy next to the to staten island mall and i got me a snowball Mm -hmm. got me a snowball went home first song absolutely sucked it was the worst thing I've ever made. <laughs> it was bad. The mixing was bad. I made the beat. The beat was great. I, I love the beat, but the mixing was ass. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, but over time, started like, you know what I'm saying? Getting better at it, yeah. Getting better, getting better, getting better, and here I am on the radar. Dope. Well, he just gave you like the abridged version of his entire story. Of my entire music career. That's that's funny. It's funny. So that means so that means you're so you, rodeo. You listened to rodeo when you were fifteen. I was nineteen when that came out. So that means you're twenty. I was like, I, I, yeah, I was like fourteen going on. So to you're twenty one now. I'm twenty. You're t- about to be twenty one. I'm, I'm turning twenty in December. I think I might have gotten the ages wrong, but fuck it. Okay, you're turning twenty in December. In so December, you're nineteen yeah. right now. Yeah, I'm nineteen. Okay, so you were mm-hmm. fourteen when it came out. Yeah, fourteen. Got you. Okay, that makes that makes a lot more sense then. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. rodeo and 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 if you're reading this, it was too late with the two albums that you feel like changed yeah, your life, changed my life completely. And well, other albums, but those two really started to spark my interest of like, all right, how do people like make Maybe, shit? Yeah. How do people like do this? Like, and the whole technical ability, like you know, what I'm saying like, fucking Mar- uh, Marie, I'm drunk. Was the first time I really like looked at. I was like, bro, who the fuck is like who did this, bro? Like waiting for Maria, calling Lost for Maria. Maria, bro. Nine oh two one zero as well, bro. Like I was like, damn, people are really doing this. Yeah. So from then I was like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna find out. It might not be now, but I'm gonna find out. I'm listening to that when I go home tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I listen to that <laughs> album all the time, bro. Right. All the time. You know, I've been to every Astroworld festival. Really? Every single one. How does it feel to live my dream, bro? Well, d- don't talk about the last one. Yeah, not the last dream. one. Not the last one. <laughs> don't talk about one. the last one. But, but uh, they were all incredible. Even the last one was incredible up until, obviously, um, I woke up the next morning and I had no idea what happened the night before. So, oh, yeah. But I think that, like, Travis as an artist... Um, had created like such an incredible lane for a lot of other people like obviously the don tolivers and things like that um and now the wolf ace joeys of course um so i think that that's pretty cool that you that you entered that sound and it's interesting because like i feel like 
I feel like I wouldn't have thought to like that your sound would have came from like a Travis Scott. I feel like it would have kind of came from um like a like a Playboy Cardi S. Playboy Cardi. Yeah, I mean, I love Cardi as well. You know, Di- Di- I remember <laughs> I never forget when Diet Lit dropped. I was in I was in the middle of class. <laughs> it's so funny. It, the story's so funny. It dropped in the middle of my Italian class. And I seen it. And in the middle of class, I'm like, yo, Cardi just dropped. Cardi just dropped. And my teacher is like, who the fuck is Playboy Cardi? And I'm like, you don't understand. Like, oh my God. And <laughs> and at the time, I was only listening to self-titled. And I'm like, bro, I need new Cardi, bro. Like, this, like, what the fuck? And then I remember it dropped. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. But yeah, I love Cardi. I mean, like, it, I, I take influences from everywhere. Mm. Every, everywhere. Like, I don't only just take from rap. Like, I, I listen to a lot of, like, like, pop shit like Zach Valere like he's a like a very cool artist um I, I found this band last year called Delta Sleep pretty fire um you know I, I just I take inspirations from everywhere have you ever met Shawnee Bin Laden I love Shawnee you know I think he follows he you? follows me yeah he does follow you that that guy is a goat he's <laughs> he's a goat like I bro I, I tell this to everyone who listens to Drill I'm mm-hmm. like bro Shawnee is like he's there mm. I'll put him uh, controversial. I put him like right next to Pop. I swear to God, Shawnee is that guy. Yeah, Shawnee's tough. every like everything about him. He's just that guy. Have you ever gotten him? You never got. You never spoken to him. Y'all I have. Each- oh, you yeah, spoken to him. I've, I've spoken to him. We have two songs together. I don't think they're gonna drop. But why? I don't know. Play he a ne- snippet. Go ahead. Take your phone out. Play a little snippet. Bro, do I even have it? Play a snippet. Fuck. All give right. a give an on the radar exclusive. On the radar exclusive. Shawnee, you know I love you, bro. I'll never leak your music. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yo, First and no, no, it, it I was, love you, bro. It nah. was mad old because um, How long ago was it? This was 2020. This was like literally during oh, quarantine. Bro, that's still considered new music if you dropped it today. Man. Well, like I think of like like Lu- the Loot Dreamville stuff. That loot Loot's verse on the Dreamville D-Day project was from 2018. And it's brand and it's br- it's a brand new record today. So really? don't ever say that music that you made years ago is old yeah. because I don't bro, I don't even know if I can find it. Because I just got a new phone. So it's like oh me too, fuck. If I find it, I'll play for you. Okay, okay, that's what I. I, If I find it, I'll play. So there's so there is some there is a there there are two, Johnny X Wolfface Joey songs out there. Out there. Why did you ever drop them? Even on SoundCloud. I never I never got them back. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) I never got them back. So but he did the verse or you don't know? No, he did the verse. He did the verse. He just didn't send it back. He just never sent it back. Shawnee, what the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> nah, shout out to Shawnee, though. That's that's really <laughs> nah, the guy. Nah, I love Shawnee. Damn, really bro, the send, the, send the tracks back. Yeah. Send the tracks, bro, please. Did, so you never even got to meet him. You just kind of worked like Yeah, we just kind of worked. Shout out, shout out to 22, because he's the he's kind of the one that kind of put... He, he's the reason why I found out about um, Shawnee. Really? It was like... Yeah, it was like this random snippet. Hold on. I think I, I can find the snippet, but I don't have his verse. Okay, you can find the snippet. That's fine. But I'm, definitely, I'm definitely with that. I... I, uh, I I was bored, quarantine, as everyone was. Mm-hmm. I f- uh, someone sent me this like sample drill beat, and I was like, "Shit!" Was Shawnee- it a Cash Cobain beat? It wasn't a Cash Cobain beat. It was. It was. Um, I forgot who produced it. There's so many yeah. drill producers. There's so There's many. So many drill producers. Yeah, so many sample but, drill producers. I yeah. just started running through all of them. Yeah, and- at the time. I was like, man, this shit's kind of fire. Did you post it on your Instagram? I posted it. It's right here. Oh, you got it. All right, yeah. good. Is it Tokyo different? Thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Says I'm out Cuban, you know that we don't. Bad little baby, and you know she ain't from. And it comes to the pack, but you know that I'm running. Two to three, hit a little boy and his cousin. Mac 11, and you know that we bustin'. Yeah. But that's your verse. That's my verse. So I literally, in the caption, literally, the caption says, yes, I've been taking this serious. Yes, I sound like Shawty Bilanin on this. And yes, this is on the EP, the EP that I never dropped. That you never dropped, okay. Uh, yeah. So I actually thought somebody else was going to get on it. And then he commented on it. Mm. And he was like, yo, send this. And I'm like, fuck. All right, bet. <laughs> Sent it to him. He previewed it on live. Like his his his, his shit, the shit is somewhere. How do you not have a video of, of his preview on live? I do. Oh wait, hold on. YouTube has everything. Uh, may, maybe okay. it might. Don't even lie in Tokyo Drift, right? We're probably, doing, probably, probably to- type Tokyo, Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift. This podcast is just getting more unhinged every episode that I do. It. <laughs> um, Tokyo Drift. I don't think he ever previewed nah, it. Nah, he he did, bro. I, well, well, no, at least well, at least not to the point where. Oh, not wait, to the point. Instagram Live February sixteenth. No, this is this is recently. This is recent. Uh, well, either way, it's out there somewhere. It's bro. out there somewhere. Some um, on somebody in in the Yellow Tape Boys hard drive. One of those boys yeah. has one of those boys has the song between the two of y'all. So, so Shawnee, send it back, please. <laughs> you know, I, when I was actually speaking of of artists commenting on your shit, mm-hmm. when I was going through your shit earlier, uh, I PPMB Rock. Yeah, showed you some love. Shout out PMB Rock on man. your on your latest Instagram post. Yeah, not my, even like an old Instagram post. It's like a new Instagram post. Yeah, my latest shit. So, um, that was for the run video. 
Did he? Hit, did you? Did you get to talk to him at all? Yeah, like the DMs? I, yeah. I, so he tapped in like a, a minute ago, probably like a couple months ago, probably like January. Okay, January, February. You know, he followed me. He was like, "Yo, you're fire." He like he he knew a couple of my of my friends in the underground. Mm, okay, and I, I'm guessing like he kind of found it. You know, what I'm saying through however he found it, but mm. you know, he showed love. He was like, "Yo, I think you're fire." You know, what I'm saying, and that and that's pretty. That's it's 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 a crazy experience to like. To how do I put it in words? My brain just blanked. But you know, it's crazy to think like how people that you listen to like, actually can see actually your can see you. Like it's it's crazy because like the freaking unforgettable remix. And I tell him, I tell P M V Rock, I tell P this like all the time. Like, bruh, that unforgettable remix. I heard it every single day before I went to school. Every day, I would I wouldn't listen to it, but I'll hear it from somebody's car. Right, because the radio, because power and power, we we ran that shit. They into the ran ground. it. They ran that <laughs> shit. Even me and my mom would be driving in the car out here. I found you. Like, bro, like <laughs> what? So it was every day, bro. But I, t I told <laughs> that him that. That was a great PNB rock impression. Yeah, I, to I told him that. Like the first time I'm like, bro, that Unforgettable remix is still stuck in my head because I heard it every day. But yeah, it's kind of, it's it's pretty far to, to know that like someone of that stature like fucks with me. So y'all be talking and shit. Yeah, we be talking. Music one day, maybe. Music one day, yeah. That's dope. Has anybody else like kind of that you've listened to or that you wouldn't expect like may see yourself? Has anybody else reached out to you? Um, That, that you could think of off the top of your head? Off the top of my head. <laughs> Or mostly just Shawnee and PNB. Shawnee PNB, um, DC the Don. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm opening for him on Thursday. And so when we're recording this, you had a show in Philly. Right? Yeah, I, I have a show in Philly this Thursday. By the well, it would have passed. Yeah, by now, but, he, but he already has it. But he yeah, has it. he probably already had it. And May first in Jersey. So yeah. So, so you're opening for him for both shows. Yeah, for both shows. That's tough. Yeah, that's pretty. Funny. I'm supposed to get up with DC the Don on on Zoom a long time ago. Do it. Got to do it. I'm that's on your. I'm whoever whoever emailed me about him. I'm on your ass because we have, <laughs> we still have to set that up. But that's tough. So that yeah. was, did he invite he invited you to that? Yeah, uh, his manager really fucks me. Shout out Brandon. He he was like, yo, because uh, um we did a show in Texas Blurfest, mm -hmm. and I was like one of like the the acts there, and he was there. He was like the headliner. So he had DM me before then. He was like, yo, you're fire. Blah blah. blah. I was like, all right, bet. You know what I'm saying? That's DC the Don, bro. Like, shit, fuck. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> that's so, tough. you know, um, and his manager was like, yo, we about to go on tour soon. Like, if you if you want to open, like, we could do it. And they announced it, and I was like, oh, shit. Let me hit him. And that's fire. He was like, all right, bet, for sure. That's dope. I like your sound, because your sound is obviously, like, very different than, like, anything else coming out of, like, San Island. Like, at least the artists that I'm friends with mm -hmm. or that I know of. And, like, obviously, like, in New York City, too, it's like... It's different, you yeah, know what I'm saying? It's, like, it's not like it doesn't fall into like any category that like I guess you can categorize New York music into right now. Like the three different categories, like the super lyrical, the drill, and yeah, the melodic. And like, the melodic. You're, you're kind of like, I'm like there. I'm like, <laughs> you're like up here there. somewhere, yeah. which isn't a bad thing. It's a it's, good yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a great thing. I think I take pride in it. It's like I don't sound like any of y'all. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? And it's cool, and people fuck with it. So I mean, like. I could ask for anything more, to be honest. I feel like when I like if I if I had to like look you up on YouTube, it would be like Wolf Ace Joey internet money type b like that's what i feel like would pop, would, would pop up if i really yeah. like shout out I, shout out to internet money too shout out taz taylor yeah shout out yeah. taz taylor um i was out with them last summer because i feel like an artist like like okay right because obviously your sound falls in line with a lot of artists who work with with them but mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of those artists come from like the dmv they don't really come from new york yeah. and i don't think i know any artists from new york obviously i guess like aside from the likes of like a playboy cardi uh fazo young fazo Young Fazo, okay, my apologies. Young Fazo, Young, Eli Juggs. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the three of us are like probably like the only I wouldn't say the only, but I'll say like the most known underground artists. Like around like our scene. Right. I feel like the three of us are kinda like the But you don't really get that type of sound from New York though. You yeah, know what we like, yeah, you, you don't never, get that very often. Yeah, you know you never really get it from New York, especially from Staten Island, because a lot of Staten Island people are drill rappers. Or just or like kind of lyrical rappers. Yeah. In a way. Um, it's not, there's not really, I don't know. I feel like Staten Island doesn't have like, you could be like Brooklyn is like mostly drill music and the mm -hmm. Bronx is mostly drill music. And then like mostly, well, Bronx is like drill music and like melodic music. Cause then you yeah. have like a boogie, J.I. the Prince, um, T, T, huh? Oh, J.I. from Brooklyn. Oh, J.I. from Brooklyn. J.I. Yeah. from Brooklyn. Okay. My bad. And the, um, TJ's from the Bronx, right? Yeah. TJ's from the Bronx. So you take that and like, you look at that, you're like, okay, so you could, you could categorize these these genres into these boroughs but like Staten Island is just kind of like a mix of like it's not even that people just don't 
This is a fuck Staten bro. I don't know why. It's just trees and white people over there, bro. Like, there's nothing <laughs> crazy. There's nothing crazy about Staten Island. Like, there's a, like, bro, it's it's always people who've never been there. It's like, it's just Staten Island. and white people. <laughs> I swear to, bro, I swear. Like, if you're if you're in, like, the, 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 the South Shore, it's literally it. I mean, like, the North Shore is, like, the Myrna's Harbor, like, Everybody's there, the Mexicans, black people, white people, like mm -hmm. it's a it's a mix. But once you go further down, it's literally trees and white people. It's like kinda like it's kinda like the boonies a little bit. It's like the south of New York. Yeah. The south the south of New York. They be driving trucks down there, blasting country music. Well not country music, but there's a lot of there's a lot of just white people, bro. Like rich white Italian people. Mm hmm Yeah. So that's pretty much it. Staten Island. Interesting place. So yeah. what are you kinda working on right now? Um, right now I'm just working on music videos, trying to be a creative as well. Okay. Um, working on a tape right now. The last it. tape was the home tape dropped e last year. EP. Yeah, the EP. I dropped a, I dropped another tape in February called Hughes Volume One. Just a little three pack of like like melodic shit that mm -hmm. I like to do. Um, yeah, home. I dropped that in October. Uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty good body of work. Right, cause you and you've been staying consistent. Too. Yeah, like I mean, when you go on like your when you go on like your oop that's Apple TV that's not Apple Music <laughs> when you go on your, like your Apple Music like obviously like it's just like singles after singles after singles yeah. Hughes Volume One obviously yeah Tic Tac Toe Montclair Code etc mm -hmm. um so like at least like you're staying consistent with it also yeah I'm I'm very big on consistency and sometimes it like kills me but you know I I, I take pride in that as well it's like bro like I, I don't make music all the time but I manage to drop like mm -hmm. Every month, probably two songs every month, you know, kind of that. They got thing. like anime videos to your music on YouTube. Yeah, they do. That shit's fire. I that is fire. Them. No, I peep that shit. Yeah, I be feeling them. That shit's fire. Like when when they do like the the hip hop vibe shit, and it's yeah. got like the and it's got like it got like your shit on it. When I saw that, I was like, yeah, I'm like this shit is hard. Yeah, yeah like like the oh yeah, Wave Guide. Shout out to Wave Guide. His, yeah, that's his. Hold on. Oh, wow, they got mad subscribers. Yeah, bro. If you can, if you could see in my camera, Rob, hold on. They got like a nice little anime girl. Yeah, they got like a. I don't yeah. know why it's not playing. Oh, that's Nir I think that's Nirvana. I don't know why it's not. Wait, why you can't hear? But yeah, you see like a yeah. nice little anime girl. Yeah, shout out to Wave Guy. Man. Oh, I know why it's not playing because it's on the. Uh, I had it on the speaker oh, yeah, over there. Okay. But um, but yeah, no, I think that that's pretty cool one because that shows that like you have like a fan base, fan base too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. they be they're taking these shits, they're putting. Oh, and now now we gotta play in the back. But they're taking these and they're making like anime like dancing yeah, videos too, dancing. like the lofi vibes. Like I think that that's really tough. Yeah, nah. Shout out to Wave Guy, man. They, I, I, I fuck with them. Cause that's like that's like creating a very unique lane just for yourself too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like having people make those videos to your songs and shit like that. Yeah, he yeah. got it. They got a bunch of them for you, huh? Yeah, they got it. They got a lot. They post they post my shit pretty consistently. That's fucking fire. Yeah. So what's this new EP you're working on? Um, it's called Love Valentino. Okay. Um, still working on it. I just like took it apart. <laughs> what do you mean took it apart? I literally just like dismantled the whole project. I'm rebuilding it again. I do it for all the projects. Like I do. I uh I wouldn't say I'm a perfectionist, but I try and make my stuff sound really good. Mm. So I'm like, fuck. I have to like kind of pressure myself to make something <laughs> better. Like at first, cause the same thing happened with home. When I was making home, like I had the tracks and right. I listened to it a couple of times. I'm like, I don't like this. <laughs> so I took it apart. I put it back together. I made like two new songs and it was perfect. Okay. So I'm trying to do that again. Okay. So we'll, we'll be getting that sometime soon, hopefully. Yeah. Sometime soon, hopefully. Before, before it gets really warm out, maybe. Probably. Probably. And um, I want to see you work with some artists. Like, I think it's about that time for you. Obviously we know we got the two Shawnee songs. That yeah. This is like Shawnee songs. Somewhere. Um, yeah, I got a, I got a, I got a couple songs with a, a couple uh, cool people. I got a song with Ty Fontaine. Oh, dope! Yeah, shout out to Ty. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> how did you? How did that happen? <laughs> um, he just followed me and he was like, "Bro, let's work on some music." I asked you before if there was any other artists. You didn't oh, say Ty Fontaine. Man, I there's still a lot. That's tough. I, while we were talking about DC the Don, I just thought about like five other ones. Ty should, Fontaine is hard. Yeah, should I mention all of them? Sure. All right, cool. Uh, I said Internet Money. Yeah, shout out to Internet shout Money. Shout out Internet Money. Um, Tekka. I met Tekka in LA. Nice. Yeah, he's pretty cool. I met Destroy and Lonely in LA as well. Nice. Shout out to shout out to them. Um, who else? Yeah, I think that's it. You coming up? Yeah. That type. So the Ty Fontaine song is that gonna be on the project? Maybe. Might be a single. Might be on the tape. I still have no idea. <laughs> I let uh, the thing. Something about me is like I never really plan stuff. I just do. Okay. So, cause when I plan too much, like I, I was talking to my manager about it the other day, mm -hmm. I was like, "Bro, when I plan too much, I never get anything done." 
I'm a very spontaneous guy. Yeah. So like a lot of the songs that I, I've been dropping recently have just been like, all right, here's like music, take, listen. If you don't like it, cool. If you like it, keep listening to it. But you know, now I'm trying to kind of slow down and still be like spontaneous at the same but time. But also plan a little bit more. Yeah, but plan plan a little bit more, but not to the point where I'm like frying my brain. Right. I feel like you need to I feel like it's time for you to drop some of those collabs. We gotta we gotta call Shawnee. We gotta yeah. get those songs together. Yeah, we, we gotta, gotta get, get the tie we gotta get the tie song. Yeah, the ready tie to go. the tie song is here. I'll play for you after. Oh, okay. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I got some I got a song with my boy Envy Derek. Nice. Shout out to Derek. Um I don't have that many I don't have I don't know why. I don't have that many features. That's okay. There's, yeah. You don't need that many features. You're good. I know. You got a good fan base. But you, yeah. the features that you have are pretty dope. Yeah, they're pretty dope. I think yeah. that's what I think that's what matters at the end of the day. Yeah, facts. That you got you, you got a Shawnee feature somewhere out there in the tuck. <laughs> yeah. You got the Thai feature. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of people showing you love. It's only yeah. the beginning for you. My fans are my fans are insane. And so they're only gonna get crazier. I hope you know yeah, that. Yeah, they're only gonna get crazier. Like, man, I love my fans, bro. They're so funny. Like they're ridiculous. <laughs> What's the funniest thing they ever said to you or DM'd you? Um. I remember when I, I dropped when I was supposed to drop D and D, and this is when like my TikTok was going fucking bonkers. Mm. I remember this. This might sound a little bit scary, but I think it's absolutely uh, like ridiculous. Some some dude was like, "Yo, bro, drop D and D before I do it," and he sends me a picture of a fucking gun. I'm like, "Yo, what the hell, what bro? What the fuck? Like, what the fuck, bro? I mean, you know he's trolling. You. He's trying. Yeah, I know he was trolling, but and I texted him like, "Yo, like, why would you send me this?" And he was like, "Nah, I'm trolling. I don't have a gun, but." Because it's probably like, just a kid. Yeah, it's probably just a kid. And he was like, but, but please drop me, please drop D and D. And I was like, all right, whatever. But now <laughs> my fans here. my fans would be like, yo, drop so and so song before I stop breathing. Like, <laughs> stop drop before I fucking like drop kick a dog. Like they be saying the stupidest shit. Like they just be saying the most ridiculous shit. Um uh, But I love them. Shout out to the shout out. Do you have a fan do you have a fan army name yet? Team Joey. Team Joey. Shout out Team shout Joey. Shout out Team Joey. Ta shout out Team Joey. I can't be mad at that. Yeah. Well, look, bro, I appreciate you stopping by here today. Thank you for allowing me to be your first sit-down interview. Sure. Um, we're going to have you freestyle, which I'm also very excited for. Uh, before we sign off, though, let the people know they can follow you at. Anything else you want to let them know, that camera right there. That's all you. Gang, we'll face Joey. Just did this interview with this great guy right here. Yes, I'm saying sir. songs on the way, videos on the way, collabs on the way, Love Valentino on the way. Shout out Ghost Star. Shout out Team Joey. What more can I say? Dope. Make sure you go follow him. Pro EP. EP? Is it EP? We're calling EP. it EP. EP, EP on, on the way. way. Team Joey. I fuck with y'all. I appreciate y'all. Stop sending him crazy shit. Yeah, please. But also don't stop supporting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Check out that freestyle. It's out right now. Go show him some love. Follow him. Support is free. Love is free. Till next time. Wolfface Joey on the radar. My guy. Appreciate you. Love. Boom. What's up?